The Cross River State undoubtedly is Nigeria's premier tourism state with a teeming population of hospitable and gracious people. The serenity and beauty of the state speaks for itself. However, Cross River State is on the verge of industrial revolution courtesy of Governor Ben Ayade, fondly referred to as the Digital Governor. A man of big ideas and a consummate tactician, Professor Ben Ayade has conceived a most sustainable path to industrialization with the Calabar Industrial Park concept which is, to all intent, up and running already. The Cross River State Government has more or less silently initiated a visionary project of rapid and sustainable path to industrialization with the establishment of a Cross River State Government factory, Africa's first rice seedling multiplication plant and a 21 megawatt power generation plant dedicated to providing electricity for the industrial park and the Calabar metropolis. The Gammon factory, which was the first of several state government funded enterprises to take off at the industrial park, is already making waves. The Commissioner for Commerce and Industry in the state, Mr. Peter Egba, gave us an insight to the factory's activities to date. So far, the Cross River State Government Factory um, is engaging 3,000 cross the variants. 3,000, because we run two shifts, you know, as it stands now. But we intend to even increase that with what we're doing now with the Indians that we brought around. Because we decided to bring Indians here to enable them to do knowledge transfer to our people and also to help sharpen the skills of our people as well. And right now, as I speak to you, a whole lot of them are already very, very proficient. About 90% of our staff here are already very proficient, producing a whole lot of things from boxers to t-shirts to shirts to trousers to pyjamas and also school uniforms as well. So now we believe that with what um, the Indians are doing now and also a Nigeria Export Promotion Council is also doing with us using the Agua Desk, uh, the Africa Growth Opportunity Act. So the idea of the Agua is that it enables us to produce and export to the American market. The youthful and vibrant workforce at the factory as superintended by Mr. Atwal Kakar, an Indian expatriate who serves as project consultant. To tell you, this is one of the largest factory in the world which has been created by the Cross River State Government with a very deep vision to take the industrialization of the state as well as of the country. The directive given and the vision of His Excellency Mr. Ben Aide for the state has been to provide employment to the youths, to the women and to empower them so that the population becomes sustainable. Our aim is to become the biggest garment factory which is the only factory in Nigeria to be working 24 by 7 round the year. Senator Florence Itagiwa serves as goodwill ambassador for the industrial park with the responsibilities of marketing the viability of the park to potential investors had this to say about the factory. When you talk about industrialization of Cross River State, when we talk about what I call the silent industrial revolution going on in that state, I think the best one, you know, for me as a woman is the garment factory. And what I'm saying so is that number one, uh, most of our Top, like the security agencies, you know, like um, you know, most of those service providers order their uniforms from abroad. And when you go and see the garment factory and see the kind of work going on there, you know, the quality of the finished products, you would wonder why we go to buy things from abroad. And today I'm saying that the best quality you know, best finishing of garments is in that garment factory. But most importantly, and why I want this com you know, country to support that garment factory is that Governor Yade, number one, made it mandatory, you know, for mostly widows to be employed. So he has, in a way, rehabilitated the widows. And also, you have like almost, you know, 1,000 female girls and women working there. He's also taken 
those girls off the streets. Which means that in a way, he has succeeded in the campaign against sex slavery and using women. I think that this man is most, one of the most gender-friendly governors I have seen. Recently, the garment factory earned the enviable status of being certified and qualified to produce export-worthy garments by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council after receiving intensive training on producing products to standards required by the United States African Growth and Opportunity Act. Perhaps the most impressive plant in the park is the rice seedling multiplication plant, which is the first of its kind in Africa. Cross River State has blazed the trail and expanded the national rice production value chain with the plant's establishment, which elicitates excitement during its inauguration. The digital governor himself was personally involved in the project from concept to birthing. When the income of the state is below the carrying capacity and the salary obligations, a leader must become a visionary and must think very big. So from the depth of the recess of my intellectualism, I decided to take the big and bold step and put my leg on the paddle and press it hard. The Rice City, as we are sitting here today, has over four components. So by second term, I'm going to have people who are going to be suppliers of fertilizer. We are going to have young cross -Iberians who I have an organic fertilizer plant being set up. I'm going to hand it over to an operator. So we will have cross who are now suppliers of fertilizer to the farmers instead of depending on the inorganic input from CBN and Cobra product. We are going to have people who will be supplying us foundation seeds. We are going to have people who will be supplying us all the various uh, jute bags and uh, all the BOPOB bags that we need. So I'm creating an economy, waiting on the highway to evacuate these young people that have taken massively. So by second term, you turn and see everybody is a businessman and industrialist, and then I start leaning the government. The Commissioner for Commerce and Industry gave further insight into the operations of the all inspiring plant. And we are calling on other neighboring states, even the boy state, at those size as well. You come to Cross River State for a rice seedling factory, you place order for their seedling so that we can produce seedling for them. It increases their yield, it, um, it resists uh, diseases, it resists drought uh, because of the, you know, the, 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 the processes in which you know, the rice seedling you know, pass through in this place. That means that when the value chain is, is complete. From here, from the seedling, moving them to the farm, to the point in which you put them, they're cultivated, get matured, and they are processed in the rice factory we are building in Ogoja, is a complete value chain already. The rice seedling multiplication plant is being supervised by Mr. Jung Chang from Taiwan and is ably assisted by Ms. Ling Wang, who elaborated on their role in the project. Now we just come here and work with the governor. This is the first one in Nigeria. You never see it before. You do, we do the seed and seedling. Even in Taiwan, this factory is the most the biggest one in Taiwan. We teach uh, the workers here. Uh, my daddy's analogy and experience, we teach all the workers. So how to do that? Even we are not here, they can handle the factory and then later the seedling grow up. The Calabar Industrial Park is designed to attract industrial investors to site their plant and factories in the park with the most appealing range of incentives. We're going to have um, a free trade zone status. The idea behind that free trade zone is that for any factory that is coming to establish here, because we have a, low, a whole lot of industrial plus around here already, in which we are soliciting for investors to come around, pick them, uh, build their own factories. So that when you are running a factory that you need to import inputs into the country, that will enable you to run your factory. You don't need to like pay duty and also because of the facilities or the infrastructure we've already provided that the road, the drainages, the security, the f parameter fencing, the internet and the electricity and don't forget the state government is building a 21 megawatt you know, power uh, station. And also we, what we intend to do again is that for any uh, businessman that come around to us to establish a factory, there will be that tax holiday for a certain period. But in terms of other taxes that could like 
act as a disincentive initially for start up mostly. All those ones will, will be taken care of because there will be waivers for all those, you know, taxes. Already, some investors have indicated an interest in taking up plots within the industrial park. Mr. Chris Agara is one of such business titan who has bought into the industrial park. I own a plot. I've applied and the government has obliged. And I'm also calling upon uh, other industrialists to come quickly to cross over and take advantage of uh, this enablement that the government has uh, put together for, to set up their industries. Uh, what you need to set up the industry is uh, the right enablement, like power supply, like uh, security, and like other utilities. These are all been product provided by government. And this industry has uh, proximity to a gateway to export and also to satisfy the local needs. And also considering the fact that Cross River is an agrarian state, our people are predominantly farmers, peasant farmers in a way. Uh, the governor has also uh, set up a cocoa processing uh, industry in Ecom. Uh, the rice mill in Ogoja that is almost 100% complete and ready for milling uh, will uptake the paddies that will uh, farm by these farmers or produced by the farmers for milling at the Ogoja's rice mill. And so we have a complete value chain for rice production from the farmer to the mill and to the, to the public. Senator Florence Itagiwa, the Cross River State Industrialization Ambassador, is very passionate about the industrial park viability. And then looking at generally, you know, the industrial park and what, how he has developed that area, it is good enough for people to come in and establish their industry. You know, those projects are very, very futuristic. Therefore, even tomorrow generation, because here is a man that is so practical, came in when we are crying of loss of oil well, when we, you know, gave ourselves the tag of the poorest state. He said, no, you have all the resources. You cannot describe yourself as poor. So he came out and then started establishing these industries one by one. Finally, this project will eradicate poverty in Cross River State because there will be job creation. Even if, you know, the manual workers, you know, carrying things from one point to the other would also create income. You know, so I, I think it's a project worth supporting. Two components of incentive package for investors at the industrial park already in place. One being a very impressive road network as can be seen in these panoramic aerial shots of the industrial park. Other deal sweetener for potential industrial investors in the park is the assurance of consonant and inexpensive electricity from the nearby 21 megawatt power station. As we speak, the power station is completed and test generation has taken place while awaiting a seamless hookup into the Calabar Metropolis power grid. A crew of dedicated professionals comprising of Nigerians and an expatriate working with a well-motivated workforce delivered this tremendous boost to productivity. The governor of Cross River State, the digital governor, saw it in need that Cross River need to develop their own power plant so that the citizen can enjoy the benefit of light that is very difficult to get proportionately from the federal government. So that's the dream of the, the governor of Cross River State. So this is the first phase of the light, uh, which in turn, he's going to be building more in the central, central district and northern central district. This state before now has been known to be a civil service state. So from all, from the onset, it's been a civil service state structure. Until now, that his residency, the governor of Cross State, Senator Professor Bernard Yade, has come to say that he wants to industrialize 
across the vast area. You know, one of the reasons of, one of the things we have to put in place for industries to thrive is power. Um, we have a total of eight machines. We have two 564 kilowatt machines that are our black start or our standby machines. So if anything does happen, we bring those two machines up to bring the, the rest of the power plant online. Um, by the time this plan is done, we will feed a good portion of Calabar. Um, the proposed areas that are supposed to receive the power are state housing, Calabar municipality, federal housing, water board, industrial, and street lighting. The population of Calabar metropolis and indeed the entire state are ecstatic about the giant strides towards sustainable industrialization initiated by the digital governor of the state, Senator Professor Ben Ayade. From traditional rulers to youth leaders, the excitement is palpable. Professor Itam His Majesty is the Petrarch of the Afford Kingdom and paramount ruler of Calabar South. His Excellency, Professor Ben Ayade, being conversant of, of human needs, conceived and built an industrial park to take care of the basic human, human needs in terms of health care delivery, in terms of job creation, in terms of food requirement. Also, to take care of jobs. Well, those adult, those, those uh, factories in the local park to create jobs for the local people. Even the mama put to be selling things there will have something to eat. Even the cleaners who will be sweeping the road around there will have something to take care of. And those who are ill will be taken care of. The, the widows will continue to have something to, to do and to take care of. Therefore, the industrial park will have a very tremendous health benefits, job creation, uh, food, uh, food supply, and so on. And therefore, we thank you. Therefore, we, we really pray and we'll do our best to make sure that he comes to complete that path in the next four years we're going to be around. As youth of Cross Silver State, we are going to benefit in getting life skills apprenticeship, we are going to get job opportunities, we are going to have human physical development, we are going to have money in our pocket, we are going to have employment. You can imagine that before now a lot of youth have been warming or running down the street without job opportunity. But with this industrial revolution, His Excellency has already employed over 6,000 youth in the garment factory. And this other one that has to do with the, uh, the, the rice uh, uh, factory is to give another job opportunity, which probably this one is greater than what we have already established, which we are hoping that before the end of this year, we're even going to have additional five or 7,000 youth that are going to have this job opportunity. I think this is one of the essential aspects of it. There is no doubt that Governor Ben Ayade deserves all the accolades for his visionary and bold initiatives in governance. No wonder, particularly, all segments of the society are quick to endorse the digital governor for a second term in office. Ayade will be elected on his own merit for what he has, 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 what he has done. Oh. Yes, yes. He on his own merit. So no need to tag on to, to saying that uh, that man did two times, this one did two times. Therefore, whether you were sleeping or, or dreaming, you should also get to go. And they should not be, be classified as like that. He should be supported on his achievement, based on his achievement, which all of us agree. Uh, considering the fact that the governor has done all this, I mean, um, this very wonderful uh, uh, disposition to people in terms of industrializing the states, in terms of creating employment and putting food on the table of people. We believe that he has done so well in just three and a half years. 
Uh, given the enablement, I believe very strongly that he should be given an opportunity to do his uh, second term so that he can consolidate on what he has done so far. At the end of the day, I said to myself that I'll have no moral justification not to campaign for this man to come back. I have no moral justification to climb another podium and say anything derogatory about this man. Rather, I should climb a podium and praise this man for what he's done. I really, really, as a cross Siberian, as a mother, appreciate what Governor Ayada has done by this industrial revolution. And let me tell you for your information that I offered myself, after seeing that industrial park, I put a call through to him and said, I'd like to be your ambassador so that I can help you disseminate information about this great thing that you're doing in this state. So, like I told you earlier on, there are more reasons for Yade to come back than for him not to come back. So for me, I'm for Yade continuity. The uncommon dedication and passion of the governor towards the citizens elicits an explanation and the ever articulate digital governor was kind enough to explain the source of his zeal to serve. The day I was given my doctorate degree, I knelt down and prayed to God. I said, look, I understand that once you hold a PhD, you end up in a classroom, you end up poor. I don't want to be a poor teacher. I want to be a very successful billionaire. I want to be extremely rich. I want to be a professor. But if you grant me all of this, I will choose a path to serve you. Humanity, putting smiles on people's faces, creating jobs, going into agriculture, going into hotel chains, develop all those things that take a lot of young people out of the street. That is my area that I've chosen to serve you. God has kept faith. God has kept his word. God has kept his obligation to me. Today I'm a professor. Today I'm a governor. I've been a senator. I've been successful. In all circumstances, God has kept his right. It is my duty to God. So the emotions, the passions I exhibit is in complete fulfillment of my commitment to God 20 years back. I so say it's nothing, I am not driven by politics. If I was, I won't focus on these big, big ideas. I'll be putting money to politicians. To just I will do rural roads, potholes, rural education, all those, all those things that win you votes. But I'm too deep. And my passion. My dream. Just watch out. Every cross veteran imagines that Ayade is daydreaming. But in these our times, it's dreamers that you need as leaders now. <laughs>